Welcome back, viewers, to one of Nintendo's most iconic games, Super Mario 64, ported to the DS with a bit of extra content as a launch title. And that was a good idea, because a remastering would definitely be the best thing for this Nintendo 64 classic. And I can see why Nintendo wanted on their new system in 2005. The game was getting a few years old and nostalgia was building up for it, and it would get people excited to play Super Mario 64 on the go. But instead of getting Super Mario 64 HD, we were treated to Super Mario 64 DS a remake of the original that was shaken up by its original developer to sell handhelds. Okay, we need to remember the rule of thumb about these things eventually. Bad games should get remakes, and good games should get remasters. That's why the Nintendo line of Legend of Zelda HD games has been so successful. That's how it works. A remaster would have been perfect for the first true 3D game that Nintendo released because the weakest part of that game to 2005 audiences and today is of its graphics. Despite the look of the game being iconic part of the Nintendo 64's history, we all need to realize that the game still looks like it was entirely made out of glued together building blocks. However, while we did get the game all HD-ified with some honestly beautiful looking handheld 3D-ness, we also got Nintendo trying to crowbar in new features and additional content on top of that, as anyone who even looked at this game could tell, since the box art prominently features three additional characters, Luigi, Yoshi, and... Wario? Wait, why Wario? Why the hell is Wario involved in the Rescue Princess Peach mission? In his first appearance, Wario was the direct antagonist to Mario in Super Mario Land 2. We don't even get a line in the game that says Mario was willing to pay him, or that Wario was picking up gold along the way. Wow, Nintendo. Even in concept form, this game starts out with a plot hole. Way to go. And then I just have to ask, how did Bowser and the Koopa Troop manage to capture Mario, Luigi, and Wario simultaneously the minute that they arrived at the castle? Because in this game called Super Mario 64 DS, we start our journey off as Yoshi. And the only reason that happened was because Yoshi fell asleep on the roof of the castle and Lakitu woke him up after the three Mario brothers barged into the castle. The funny thing is that the same plot point happened in Super Smash Bros. Brawl, where the only reason Yoshi was involved in the plot and the game at all was that it walked past him while he was sleeping, except this time it's important to the plot. Seriously, Nintendo, you remade a game with an incredibly simple premise everyone could get on board for and replaced it with something that has two plot holes in its first minute of existence. The addition of the other characters to this game makes the intuitive and tight controls of the original be replaced with looser and less agile movesets of other characters like Yoshi, who starts off with an eating ability and his floaty jumps with no wall kick or backward somersault. Hell, even the Mario Brothers don't get all the abilities, such as Luigi, who replaces a wall kick ability with just some higher jumps, and Wario, who becomes slower in every damn regard in a platformer, gets a punch that can just destroy everything. Notably, the black boxes dotted around everywhere, which are obviously just freaking things that were added to justify his existence. In about the first 15 minutes in bob on Battlefield, you get a real sense that Nintendo started out this remake with a lot of energy. New graphics, new characters, new movesets, new features, and some additional content on top of the original putting in another boss fight with the iconic King bob -omb along with some other bosses who hold the keys to the doors locking in the other characters. In comparison to the original boss roster, they are amazing improvements, and it was made possible through the tossing of the Nintendo 64's limitations. However, after Mario is rescued from Goombas, that hope that Nintendo put in the effort and rebuilt Super Mario 64 from the ground up 
gets buried under three tons of sand. Yeah, other than some slight changes to the classic levels to make things a bit easier and add some arbitrary hurdles to force the player to use the game's other characters, the rest of the game is simply an HD version of the original, with some Silver Star finding challenges on top which are basically just another 8 red coin challenge. It's strange that Nintendo puts so much effort into adding things to this classic game, because every time they do that, it reminds me of just how much of the attempt was done in vain. Case in point, after Mario is rescued from his door, you can pretty much clap your hands together and say job done since a Mario's original moveset unchanged from the other game is able to net you about 90% of the stars in the entire game. And it shows how much of a terrible idea it was adding character switching to this game. The only, only reason that you have to switch to different characters is because you'll need their specific abilities to walk through walls or punch things along with getting access to the metal and vanish caps of the original, which in the remake are exclusive to Wario and Luigi respectively. For the rest of the game, Yoshi is never heard from again. He doesn't even get a branded door along with the others and I never found him again throughout my playthrough. So the biggest addition to this game in the extra characters was to add abilities that Mario already had access to in the original N64 title. And to make it even more completely pointless, Mario was then able to find hats throughout other levels that transform it into other characters anyway. So please explain to me under what circumstances it makes any fucking sense to add in new characters when you could have accomplished the same damn thing by just adding a fourth or fifth hat type. Which you do in the freaking Balloon Mario thing. Which completely shits over the original wing cap because it's so much fucking more intuitive to use. What the actual fuck, Nintendo, are you doing? And this is the problem when you decide to remake a good game. You just end up adding dumb distractions or additional steps to gameplay that was already working amazingly well when it was first released. If you wanted to add a new content to justify the need for a launch title remake, fine, do that and leave the other Mario Brothers at home because there is no reason for them to be in this plot. And speaking of such, the other thing that Nintendo tried super hard on, spent hour upon hour on, and sacrificed so much of their development plan on, was adding mini-games to Super Mario 64. Yes, because what fans were all crying out for was to get Mario Party style minigames into their 3D platformer. And you want to know what they add to the game? Absolutely flippin' nothing. You don't get any rewards, coins, or additional stars for bothering with them in the game. I was able to hit the credits without even looking at them once. I didn't think this would need explaining, but apparently it does. When other developers put in side activities to their video game, they usually tie it back to the core gameplay by giving players additional cash, challenges, or access to content by dealing with them. It gives them a reason to pursue the side activities when in normal gameplay. When you don't have that, why should anybody bother? I know I'm tempting fate with Nintendo of all companies, but forcing players to use the new minigames would have been better than tacking them on as an afterthought. And there is no possible way it was one of them, since there's over 25 of these goddamn things, all available by capturing multicolor rabbits around the castle. Other than all of that nonsense, it's your typical HDified Nintendo game. Essentially the same as the original, prettied up with advanced graphics, and maybe there's some changes to make the game easier. All of the original stars from Super Mario 64 are intact, and kept in their original locations, with their ridiculous objectives needed beating, and while doing those, it makes the additional 7th star in every location feel tacky. Especially since most of those stars are silver star challenges, which boil down to find 5 more things dotted around the level. Pretty please? At the very least, they kept all that content, and it's obvious that they did since Nintendo wanted to capitalize on old school nostalgia to help move their new system, which is a fine idea as they go. But the game's biggest problem 
is its main selling point, adding Luigi, Wario, and Yoshi to a game where they don't belong. The gameplay doesn't work, it ends up getting worse, it adds pointless hurdles and steps to something that had already been perfected, and it doesn't make any sense in terms of the plot. Why are any of these people here? Nobody knows. While the game retains a lot of the original's good graces, to which it got positive reviews for doing so. If I was rating this on the things that were just added from this new development to the old game, I'd bet it'd see a 4 or 5 out of 10. Because they loosened up the old controls for all the characters, gave new characters ridiculous movesets that don't work in the Super Mario 64 gameplay style, the new stars are tedious junk, and its main selling point is the beautiful HD graphics, which honestly amazed me that it came out during launch of the DS, since when Nintendo wanted Call of Duty on the system, it looked like a dumpster fire threw up on the Simpsons tire mount. This game continues to prove the adage that good games need remastering, and bad games need remaking. If you need more proof of this, look at Silent Hill Shattered Memories, which decided to remake Silent Hill by throwing out the original gameplay and story to turn it into a moronic motion-controlled mess with a facepalm-level twist ending. I know that I didn't have a lot to say in this video, because 90% of its content is just the HD versions of the original N64 platformer's content. But it needs to be said, again and again, that remaking good games is a terrible idea. Super Mario 64's weakest point was its graphics. And you did that job, Nintendo. It didn't need new characters, it didn't need new stars, it just needed HD-ifying. At least next week we'll be moving on to another game in our current mini-series of DS titles before the Wii ones started being released. So you'll just have to stay tuned to figure out which game I'm actually talking about. Until then, we'll put up the final scoreboard and a victory for gamers that needs not remaking. I'll see you guys for the next round at the next time.